Hello, my name is Victor Wooten, and I'd like to start by thanking you for joining us here today. Today we're going to take a look at music, and an extraordinary look at music. And what I mean by that is it's going to be a little bit different. Um, and why do I say that? Well, to me, music is a language. And I haven't met a musician yet that didn't agree with that, that music is a language. So that brings me to the question, what is a language? A language is a way to communicate something. It's a way for me to explain to you what I'm thinking or feeling. It's a way for us to converse. We can share ideas through our language. But if you think about that, what's most important is not the language, but having something to say. Having something to convey is what's most important, right? So music to me does the same thing. It's a way of explaining, uh, displaying, putting out our emotions and having someone else understand or feel them, okay? So music and language, let's start from there that they are one and the same. Now we have to think about how did we learn our first language, which for me is English. I, I learned English at a very, very early age. And here's the interesting thing, I never practiced it. We never practiced English and we were never taught English. We were exposed to it and we were freely given the opportunity to explore the language. At about age two, in English, I could already improvise. I didn't have to read what it is I wanted to say. Actually, I couldn't read at all. I didn't know any English theory. I never knew what a noun or a pronoun was until I was probably five or six years old. I didn't know any scales, meaning the alphabet, not at two. But I could speak freely. I could converse with people much greater than I was at that language. And actually, that's how I got so good at the language. Because when I was a baby, before I could even say a word, I was forced and allowed to speak with professionals. Now let's look at this other language that we call music. We don't allow that in music. The beginners are put into a beginning class. For the most part, we're not allowed as beginners to play and perform and converse with the professionals. We're told we're beginners. We were never told we were beginners in English. No one ever told us that. In English, if we were a beginner and we said something wrong, we were actually praised for it, to the point that our parents would start saying things wrong with us. If we developed our own language, our parents would learn it. We weren't forced to change. So we were always allowed to feel good about however it was we chose to speak, which allowed us to have and speak with our own voice. Now in music, after many, many years of playing, we have to try to find our own voice. That's one of the reasons that I say we approach music backwards. We teach music backwards. We think about music backwards. If music truly is a language, I think we should really treat it as one. That's what we're gonna do here today. We're gonna treat music like a language and we're gonna explore it in a way never before done, never before seen on video. So I hope you're willing to take that journey with us. It's going to be different and it's going to challenge you. But don't we need to be challenged? I think so. So I want to thank uh, some people involved here. My good friend Anthony Wellington will be sitting up here in front with me, helping me explain some ideas, uh, sharing some of his unique ideas with you. 
and uh, we have a group of bass players that are going to be sitting here with us. I want to thank Joe Sanchez and all the other bass players and everyone here involved with this video shoot for allowing me to express myself this way. If you're ready to take this journey, you're ready to go along a different road, down the rabbit hole, we might say. You're going to take the red pill or the blue pill. <laughs> here we go. Let's do it. All right, welcome here. I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, all of you guys uh, came from the Bass Collective, is that right? And we're gonna uh, have some fun here today. Hopefully, you know my good friend Anthony Wellington. Hey guys. Thanks uh, for yeah. Out. Anthony's gonna help out today because he's got a he's one of the best music teachers that I know. And uh, in order, in, in, instead of me stealing some of his information, I figured we'll just have him here to give it to you himself. And uh, I'd like to welcome Francesco and. Josh and Kirk and Dave, Michael and Joe, thank you all for being here. This should be fun. Um, we're going to talk about music today. We're all bass players, but our goal with the bass is to play music, right? So let's get straight to the point. Let's play some music. Cool? All right. Um, how about Josh? Josh, yeah. just uh, take a solo for us, okay? But you're going to play with us, all right? Is that cool? One, two, and go. Okay? Play with us, y'all. Okay, stop for a second, Josh. You ready, Dave? Thank you. 
Okay, cool, cool. Um, what was going through your mind? When we say play, what's the first thing you think about? What goes through your head? Anybody, just raise your hand if you have an idea. Think about what goes through your head when we ask you to play. Anybody. Okay, Kurt? Trying to find the key. Trying to find the key. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Any, any other? All right. Oh my God, Dick Wooten just asked me to solo. <laughs> right, right. That doesn't happen much, right? Um, but other than that, though, anything else that goes, goes through your mind? What are you, uh, are you using anything to solo? What goes through your head? Yeah, trying to find, you know, uh, your key, some sort of uh, progression that mm -hmm. you're doing. Okay. Um, everybody else kind of agree? Or is there anything different that we haven't said yet? Yes. Uh, try to like find the form of the song. Find the form of the song. Okay. So the form of the song meaning what? Like, like what, like how long you spend on the chords, or okay. like where the chords are going, or okay. like what, how they're related. Okay. Great. All right. But what I'm finding out is a, a a theme that every time I ask this question to people, it comes back to the same thing. It's dealing with the notes, the key, the pitch, the chords. Uh, that we're supposed to play. Basically, we're all trying to play the right notes. There's nothing wrong with that, all right? The only thing I would say is that the audience or the listeners or the other musicians don't want to wait for you to play the right, to find the right note, all right? I like to tell people a lot of the times, people who know nothing about music, a lot of the times have an advantage over us that claim to know a lot about music. If I asked you to dance to this, what question would you have to ask? None. The music tells you everything. You know what the feel is, you know what the groove is, and your body moves. But if I ask you to play, you can't play until you find the key. Everything you need to know about the song, about the feel of that song, everything you need to know except the key is available to you. But if we're only relying on knowing the key before we can play music, then we're wasting a lot of time. We're not use, utilizing all of the tools that are right there in front of us, right? You know it's in 4-4. You know it's a danceable thing. You know it feels like we could groove to it, right? If you want to go to chords, you can say, okay, I know that there's really only two going back and forth, right? You know the feel, right? You can start playing right away if you'd like. But I want to add this. If you have to search for the root, groove while you're doing it. Groove. If Anthony throws some chords at me, go ahead, Anthony, anything, okay? Now, I don't know where he's at, right? Just stay in one place for a while so I can, that's fine. All right. Now, I don't know what that root is. So as I come in, the first thing I'm going to do before I play a note most of you guys are going to think, where's the root? That's the first thing you think. First thing I think is, what is the groove? And I start allowing my body to feel the groove. Now I know whatever note I play is going to groove. Whatever note I play, I have a better or 50-50% chance of it being one of the seven right notes. And I'm going to listen and use that to tell me where the root is. But I'm gonna groove all the while. So I still don't know, okay? I feel the groove. I'm gonna come in. Made a part, all right? That note told me where it was, my first note. As soon as I hit that, I knew it was there, right? But I didn't go like this. Then let the music start. I let the music start even before I start. Another key, Anthony. All right? I don't know where it's at. I don't have to. Right? I groove the whole way there so that the person listening, the person drinking their coffee or their wine, or the person dancing, 
they don't feel anything different because the groove never falters. But if I stutter step my way through until I find it, that's going to just ruin everybody's groove. So brings me to my next question. We're all looking for the right note in order, we can, in order to play. And when we find the wrong note, we can't even play. So I'm going to ask you this question. As a bass player, would you say that we are groove players or note players? Which one do you think would come first, groove or note? I see you about to say something, Dave. What is that? Well, I'm, I'm not sure that one has to come first. Well, I'm not it's sure either. Larger. I'm not sure that one has to come first. But let's just say one does come first. Well, then groove. Then groove. Why do you say that? Um, because the, the song as a whole is more important. Okay, well, if you're a groove player first, why do you look for the note first? That's it brings up a good point. Think about this. <clears throat> if the groove is what we are first, then that's what we should find first. Now, I'm gonna, I'm, I agree with you. Groove is first for us, especially us in the rhythm section. Groove is first. Think about this. I'm sure we've all played gigs. People have listened to us play. How many times has anyone ever walked up to you after a gig or a show and said, man, you played great notes? You're laughing because it doesn't happen. And I'd kind of worry if it does. That's not the but, compliment you want to get. That, say it again? That's not the compliment you want to get. Right. And, and what, is, what is it that you do want to hear? And this is what we normally hear. Well, what I want to hear is somebody come to me and say, man, it feels good to play with you. That groove felt good. Then I know I've done my job as a bass player. If, if other musicians start coming up to me and complimenting me on my notes, then I probably upset the singer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If somebody else is noticing my notes more than they're noticing the singer, I probably um, stepped over my boundary. So I want to make it feel good. Now that's what I want people to notice. And that's what people notice. You know, that's what people are looking for in a bass player, you know. Right. They talk about your groove, your feel, your pocket. That's what us bass players hear. Which makes me say that we are groove players much before we are note players. So that was just a long way of saying find the groove first. All right, so we won't do this exercise again, but I can guarantee you that if we did do it again and I had you find the groove before you even touch that instrument, you groove. I guarantee you the first note you play, right or wrong, it's going to feel good. It's feel good, and, and it's simple to do. It's real, real simple. Now, I want to take it a little step further because we're all looking at notes, and in my opinion, notes is 99% of what we think about when it's time to play. It's 99% of what gets taught, all right? That's what's in the DVDs. That's what's in the music schools. That's what's in the books. We're teaching notes. If we think about music as a whole, right, there's more to it than just notes, correct? All right, so let's look at that. If we, if we took music as a whole, and let's say we're going to divide music up into 10 equal parts, all right? Now, we could divide it up into as many parts as we want, but let's just say that there's 10 equal parts. And the key word here is equal, all right? Will you write these down for me, Anthony? All right, and I'm gonna put the first one on the board, and this is the one that gets a lot of attention, maybe even too much, notes. If you, if you don't mind writing one, is notes, okay? So what I want you guys to do is think of other things that are just as important in music as notes. Can anybody come up with anything that you would think, uh, okay, Francesco? How about articulation? Articulation, I like how you articulated that. <laughs> how about articulation? I like that, very, very nice. Articulation is gonna be number two, okay? While he's writing, anybody else? All right, Kirk. Technique. <laughs> yes, technique is very, very important, all right? You can have all the ideas in the world, um, but if you don't have the technique to get it out, that's just a recipe for frustration. So you need good technique okay all right we got three seven to go what's next i see your hand going up michael uh like emotions emotions okay um write emotion but if you don't want to put slash feel okay now they're different things because when we talk about the feel we can talk about what kind of feel does the song have like groove or something you know um what's the feel is it reggae or whatever but feel can also be related to emotion how do you feel or even more so, how does the listener feel, right? We can evoke feeling or emotion from the listener 
and we can put feeling and emotion into our music. So I'm going to put emotion slash feel. Okay, we're getting close. Someone else. Number five, what's it going to be? Okay. Go what about dynamics? Dynamics? Cool. I'll take dynamics. That's a good one. That's a good joke. They say they asked the guitar player, uh, you, you know, to play with some dynamics. And he said, what do you mean? I'm playing as loud as I can. <laughs> I tell that joke a lot. Um, dynamics is real good. How loud and soft and in between those loud and soft that you play. Okay. Uh, we're halfway there. Number six. Go for it, Dave. Uh, tone. Tone. I'll take it. Let's say tone. Tone will be number six. I saw your hand going up, Joe. What were you going to say? I was going to say, how about melody? Melody is a good one. And, of course, it can be on the list. But I'm going to put melody in with notes because I don't think I explained this. Notes will be anything dealing with pitches, scales, harmony, chords, key signatures, melody. We're going to put under there with notes. They are different, but we're going to put it in there. That will allow us to get more on our list. So can you think of anything else that you might want to be on there? How about rhythm? Perfect. Rhythm. And Anthony, if you don't mind, or if you guys don't mind, I'm going to put rhythm slash tempo. Okay, tempo and rhythm are separate things, but to get more on our list, we're going to put them together. Rhythm, you know, separating chord and those eighth notes and all that stuff. Tempo, how fast or slow. We can put them together for this list. Three more. All right. Uh, what are we at? Eight. Okay. Number eight. I got one. Okay. What is it? Phrasing. Okay, good. Phrasing. I like phrasing because most people only think about phrasing as it pertains to notes. You know, making a nice phrase with a scale or some patterns or different things like that. But anything on this list, anything on this list can be phrased. You can make phrases up by changing your tone. Right? You can create phrases by adding in, oh, I was about to say something that was going to give away what I want was going to be the next one. Uh, okay, I'm not going to say anything. Let's get them all up there first. Who's, who's, anybody else got something else? What's number nine going to be? I can hear it happening right now. I think Space. They, absolutely. Space. That's it. Space. Now, I was just getting ready to say it. You can create good phrases by adding space. Actually, in order to have a phrase, you have to have space, Right? Actually, in order to have two different notes, there has to be space, right? And I could go even further to say it's space that allows anything to be separate from anything else, right? If there were no space between me and Anthony, there'd only be one of us, right? So take away all the space in the world and you get one. But we won't go into that, all right? Now, there's a last one I want to make sure is up there. And I'm kind of glad no one said it. But I don't know if anyone's ever said it no. in the years that we've done this exercise. And in my opinion, okay, these are all equal. We're going to put number 10 up here, and it's equal also. But if I had to give priority to one of these elements, if one of these things were more important than the other, this one would be the one that, in my opinion, is by far the most important part of music. And could anyone think of what that might be? Okay, here's a clue. As I'm talking, what are you doing? Go ahead, Michael. Listening? Absolutely. Listening, right? Listening is the absolute most important part of music. Now, Beethoven created a few symphonies deaf, but I guarantee you he could hear in his head. He knew what it sounded like. All right. So there are different forms of listening, but listening is the most important thing to any relationship. Right? And I'm going to come back to that a little bit later in this dialogue. Listening to me would be far at the top. All right. Now, let me ask you this, too. A lot of people study music theory, right? Probably I, I've studied very little. I know very little music theory. Um, but in most of our music theory classes, out of these elements up here, I'm just calling them elements, we've got 10. Which one of these does music theory, for the most part, teach us? Which one of these elements, out of all of these, does music theory talk about? Anybody? Okay, go ahead, Dave. 
Number one. Okay. <clears throat> Notes. Notes. Yeah. Okay, I would agree. I would agree. Now, it depends on the teacher. You know, a good teacher is going to get into hopefully all of this stuff and more. But for the most part, at least 95% of what we deal with in music theory is notes, scales, modes. And in jazz, we're learning how to, you know, add more harmony in and, uh, uh, you know, chord substitutions, how to solo over giant steps, right? You can go into a music store and throw a dart and it's going to hit a book talking about notes. That's what we talk about for the most part. That's it, all right? But now, hopefully, we're starting to see that there is a whole lot more going on, a whole lot more going on, all right? For example, if I play some notes, right? Ain't nothing going on. I can change the note. Those are good notes, but you're sitting there with a blank face, look on your face, because it's not moving you, it's not doing anything, right? Until, if I play note and I start to articulate, all of a sudden, there's something going on, right? Now with articulation, I'd even add duration into it. I'd put articulation slash duration, because how long you hold notes are important too. So all of a sudden there's a groove, not much, but it's starting to be born where it was non-existence with notes alone, right? So with dynamics, with feel, with tone, with uh, different rhythms and phrasing and adding in space, all of a sudden a groove is born, which is why I say it's numbers two through 10 as a whole that make up groove. Groove, in my opinion, is not found in number one. It's two through 10. And so you guys told me that we are groove players, right? So it's two through 10 that needs to be studied, needs to be taught, and it needs to be in the books, the videos, and the DVDs, because that's what's gonna make you a good player. There's only 12 notes but there's an infinity amount of articulation technique, emotion, feel, dynamics, tone, rhythm, phrasing, space, and listening, all right? So how do you get good at two through 10? It's a very, very good question. You're on your own, because no one's teaching it. You're on your own. But in order to be considered one of the good players, you have to learn it. I'd like to add something to that. If you think about different genres of music, what you'll notice is what they have in common are the same notes. A C major seven chord is the same C major seven in jazz as it is in country, as it is in polka, as it is in rock. So it's not the notes that give us our different genres. Really, the difference between the different styles of music is two through ten. Each, each different genre of music has a different set of two through ten, but the exact same notes. If you think about your favorite bass player in the world, and if you think about your least favorite bass player in the world, what they have in common is the notes, what makes them different players, or what, make, what makes you like a player, or what makes you not like a player, is just two through 10. I always say the best bass player in the world isn't good enough that he can add a 13th note. And I always say the worst bass player in the world isn't so bad that he's not allowed some notes. This, you know, this is what we all have in common. And what makes us different, fortunately, is two through 10. That's why we, be, we need to be hyper aware of two through 10. Definitely. All right, the notes that Jocko has on his bass are the same notes that we have on ours. The notes that Stanley and Marcus, Larry Graham, Paul McCartney, Bootsy, they don't have different notes. But I can play Teen Town. I can play School Days. But for some reason, I don't sound like Marcus. I don't, I mean, I don't sound like Jocko. I don't sound like Stanley. What is it then? The notes are the same. The notes are right. It's the two through 10, all right? So that's what I say we should be practicing a whole lot. I'm gonna just show you one more little thing, okay? To demonstrate something. Um, I'm gonna have Anthony play a groove in G minor. 
And do me a favor, write something for me, too. Um, I'm going to be straightforward with you. I know very little music theory. Um, but I do know enough that if I'm, in the, if I'm in G minor, I know that I can play a G. That's how smart I am. So write a G up there. Um, so in the key of G minor, what other notes can I use? Anybody? Just what, I, what else is it? I know I've got G. What's next? Go ahead, Joe. A. A, okay. B I see flat. you. B flat, okay. What C. Else? C, right? D. D, keep going, yeah, D. E flat. E flat, E flat, okay. And F. is that it? F, thank you. Okay, and then after that is G. So in the key of G minor, I have G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, and then G again, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to solo for you right now as best as I can. This is going to be a, a, an honest attempt to solo as best I can at this moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use any of those notes. I'm only going to use the five that you didn't mention. Okay? And I'm going to solo. Okay? Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, that's two different approaches to a solo, all right? You heard the first approach, and then I changed to the second approach. Out of those two approaches, which one did you say you liked better? First which one? one? Say it again. First one. The first one. Anybody else? Yeah, the first one. First one, okay. So that's a, I guess that's a consensus, that the first one. But listen to this, okay? Because I want to make sure you want to say what you're saying. The first solo had all the wrong notes in it. As best as I could, I didn't use any of those notes. And the second one, I can guarantee, had the right notes in it. But you're telling me you like the wrong note solo better? You want to stick with that? Here's your chance right now on camera to change your mind. Well, look, all you guys are presently studying music, <clears throat> and you're willing to go back and tell your music teacher that a solo with the wrong notes was better than a solo with the right notes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, all right. So now that brings me to my second question, okay? You like the solo with the wrong notes in it. So it brings me to this question. Why was it better? Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, it's like the two through 10. And the solo with, the, uh, with all the wrong notes, you were, what's the word, being more judicious in your approach for two through 10. And the right. one with the right notes, even though it was, you know, in the right scale, in the right key, um, I think you were purposefully, you know, uh, falling short in two through ten right. to illustrate your point. Right. And in words that I can understand. <laughs> Judicious <laughs> judiciously. That's a big word I thought for I was in court. <laughs> I thought I was in court all of a sudden, man. <laughs> that was good, though. Woo, man. 
But you're absolutely right. What you, uh, what I hear you saying is that in the first solo, with all the wrong notes, two through ten was present. So that made the wrong notes sound right because they felt right. In the second solo, when all the right notes were present, two through ten wasn't. And it even made the right notes sound horrible. So what that says, what I hear you saying, okay, I'm getting this from you. What I hear you saying is that whether the note sounds right or wrong depends on two through ten. Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Okay. Whether the, I'm going to repeat it. Whether the note works or not depends on two through ten. Okay? But we spend 95% of our time chasing notes, studying notes, wanting to learn more scales. That's all good stuff. That is all good stuff. Learn all the scales, all the notes you can. But do not exclude two through ten. You need to become a master of notes, but you also need to become a master of articulation, technique, emotion and feel, dynamics, tone, rhythm, tempo, phrasing, space, and you definitely need to become a master listener. Once you can master two through ten, you'll be like Miles Davis, and then you'll realize, I don't need many notes. That is a master musician. We've talked about 10 different parts of music, and you guys helped, uh, helped us come up with 10 equal parts. And <clears throat> in my opinion, the one that we think about, are taught about, and explore the most are notes, all right? That's first on our list, so I'm going to say let's talk about that. Let's spend a little time talking about notes, because um, my goal here is to give you alternate things to think about. What I'm telling you is not to take the place of what you've been taught, because you've been taught great stuff. I heard you guys warming up, and you're all great players. So the things you've been doing are working. But I just want to give you some things to add to it, OK? So don't let any of this stuff replace anything, right? But everybody's talking about notes. Every book is teaching you scales, chords, harmony. You know, we want to know how to solo over giant steps or whatever. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, all right? But I have a question I want to ask you, something I do want you to think about. How many notes in our Western style of music, how many notes are there? Anyone? Twelve, twelve simple. We have, we have twelve notes, all right? We're on a piano from C, you know, C sharp, D. Backed up to C is twelve. That's all we have, those twelve notes. Here's my next question. This is for anyone. Somebody uh, raise your hand and give me an answer. How many of those 12 notes would you say you are comfortable with? You know, as, as a younger player, maybe you rely on, on recognizable shapes, mm -hmm. like the pentatonic mm -hmm. scale or right, something. Right, right, yeah. shapes. So yes. perhaps five. Okay, right. Five is good. I get, we get that a lot. Mm -hmm. Five, we get 12. Sometimes we get seven. But the reason I say one is because you can't play your pentatonic scale until you find one particular note and what is that note root. say it again the root the root right so when we were changing keys when anthony and i were changing keys most of you couldn't even play until you found the root right so that's why i say you are only comfortable with one note 
Now that one note changes depending on the key, but it's still only one note. Once you find it, then you can play. Now I hate to sound mean, but that's a shame. You guys are good players. You've been playing a long time. I can hear it, but you're still only comfortable with one note out of the 12. You shouldn't have to find that one note before you can play. All right. In most keys that we're in, if we pick a key, let's say G minor, there's 12 notes total. How many of those 12 notes are in the key signature? Most of the time, how many notes? Seven. Seven, right, seven, right? So there's seven right notes and only five so-called wrong notes. That means even if I guess, I'm gonna hit a right note more than half the time. So if I'm looking at a piano where I have the white keys and the black keys, if I'm in the key of C major, seven of those white keys are in that key. Only five are not, right? But let's, hap let's say what happens if I happen to land on a wrong note. If I happen to land on a black key, and I'm only supposed to hit the white keys, if I'm standing on this black key, what's on either side of me? A white key, absolutely. All the time. There is no black key on the piano that doesn't have a white key on either side. What is that telling you? That you are never more than a half step away from a right note. But if you can only find the root, you can be a long ways away. And that was what was happening when we first asked you to play, as you were searching for the root. So there's a lot of books out there that teach you scales, chords, and for whatever reason, we've studied them too. But we're still only comfortable with the root. So in a sense, it's not working. I mean, let's be point blank. It's not working. So my goal today is to get you comfortable with, or give you a tool to get you comfortable with all 12 notes. And everything I'm gonna talk about is gonna come down to that last element we talked about, which is listening. You have to listen to them all, all right? You know a lot of scales probably. You've learned them all, Phrygian, Dorian, all that kind of stuff. I guarantee you, I can name one you never practice, and it's the simplest one. And